So I think first things first, we're right by Dorothy's house, right? It's so funny. We didn't even we didn't even go to the hospital before. I think this is Dorothy's, right? If I remember correctly. Okay, great. So we have a key that theoretically should go to the locked door in here. I have to imagine that's the case. And if I'm not mistaken, we also found out that Sophia... Oh, maybe she didn't stay here, but she at least spent some time here. So maybe we'll find some more information about Sophia here. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, that's right. So this is Dorothy's room. Uh, we found it in 203. Perfect. Okay, so this is Dorothy's room. Oh, seems like she was very religious. What do we... Aha, uh -huh, what do we have here? Pendant of Mother Mary. Okay. Uh, she was obviously very religious. Not terribly surprising, given, you know, where she lived and how old she was. What do we have here? We have a newspaper. Daughter of ex-mayor found dead at Paints Creek Community Hospital. Oh, Trisha Roberts falls 40 feet from the rooftop. Wait, what? Okay, hold on. So, was she pushed or did she jump? Yesterday morning, the body of Trisha Roberts was found on the grounds of Paints Creek Community Hospital. Oh, boy. She was pronounced dead at 7.30 in the morning. According to Miss Thompson, she was starting her morning shift when she heard some sound near the reception area. She went out to find Trisha laying, lying motionless. Blood was flowing out from her head. She quickly called for Dr. Bennett, the attending physician for the day's morning shift, who brought Trisha to the emergency room at once. Unfortunately, it was too late. The hospital CCTV shows that Trisha Roberts was walking around the hospital at around 6.30. She headed to the roof at 6.54 a.m. A few minutes later, her body was found on the ground, three floors below. Charles Roberts, ex-mayor and father of the deceased, I'm sure, is grieving. Oh my god, so I guess the idea is that she jumped or maybe the ghost did it. Maybe maybe, maybe that's like the, the punishment that Sophia, but it doesn't seem like Sophia is necessarily like violent I, assuming that she's a ghost and there's not someone else in the town trying to murder trisha because like trisha didn't hurt anybody right as far as we know like she didn't kill i mean maybe she did kill someone but i don't think so i guess this is uh, i guess it's, it's interesting the timeline like did trisha die before scott or after scott so this is december 27th 1995 I guess we'll have to read that or find that again. Okay, and none of these notes are readable. Interesting. Okay, anything? I, I think we can open up this, right? Yes, we can. I guess that was that drawer. Oh, okay, there is a diary here. Excellent. All right, Monday, October 27th, 1995. Scott was released from prison this morning. Matthew went to pick him up. There's a lot of tension here in Payne's Creek. Most people think of Scott as a murderer. <laughs> I mean, he is a likely suspect, but I don't think so. Charles tried to stop Trisha from seeing Scott, but it's no use. She was already waiting for him at the cabin. Monday, November 6th of the same year. Charles is drinking again. He couldn't stop Trisha from trying to see Scott. Yet Scott seems to be avoiding her. Trisha should not have been discharged from the hospital at this point. She still needs help and rehabilitation. So this is after Trisha left the hospital because she was admitted for having like an anxiety or panic attack after Scott was arrested for the murder of her mom. Okay, so here's the timeline of that. Derek and Scott fought at the market today. Derek asked Scott why he's avoiding Trisha. Scott didn't say anything. He just walked away. Derek told him not to come back anymore. It's sad to see what's happening to them now. They used to be such good friends. November 16th, 1995. Oh my God, Scott was killed? That seems like a very like odd entry to put in your diary. But I guess that does confirm that Scott died after Trisha was released from the hospital, but then she went back. Maybe she had another panic attack or, or breakdown. Okay. Uh, December 2nd, Trish has been going crazy ever since Scott died. She sometimes screams in the middle of the night. Here and there, she'll ask us why Scott hasn't visited for a while. No one seems to know how to answer without agitating her condition. So yeah, it seems like the fact that Scott also died also was a mentally destabilizing factor. December 6th, Trisha is finally being admitted to the hospital for another mental breakdown. Charles doesn't know what to do. I've asked for her permission to take I asked for his permission to take care of Trisha at the hospital until she recovers. I think Charles appreciates my help. 
Okay, so that definitely confirms that timeline. Oh, boy. Why, why, why did it have to, oh, what do we have here? Oh, Sophia. So she did keep something of Sophia's here. Oh, very interesting. Okay, so we're going to definitely have to try to get into that. Uh, <laughs> nope, not two, three, one, six. Ah, uh, we can always try. Okay, so, so I guess, yeah, Sophia, oh, no, no, sorry. Trisha died after Scott died. It seems like she killed herself, but, you know, that's only a guess. Oh, what do we got here? We got a letter and a key. Let's, it looks like a house key, but to which house? Interesting. Let's see. All of her photo lab cleaning. Oh, I wonder if it's to the photo lab. Okay. Uh, dear Dorothy, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude for all you've done for me. You've taken care of my store on a, on so many occasions. You've helped ma maintain its bright... What? Bright? Spirit? Sp spirit. Yeah, sure. I would be lying if I said I'm not saddened by your departure. I will greatly miss you. I wish you all the best in your new place. Do invite me there once you've settled in. May God be with you. Best regards, Oliver Gibson. So yeah, I wonder if that key is to the photo place? That'd be my guess. Yeah, so there's a four-digit code. And, oh man, we also have now... Oh my God, we have so much stuff. Let's see. Uh, we have... Where was it? There was the note about the fact that I think it was from the previous priest about how there there was a like a way to find something that oh no no it was about the favorite things that uh, Father Matthew and Sophia shared. Right, right. Okay, okay. So we have the key to the photo lab now. So I guess let's go there. We have so much to investigate. We also need to find out what the favorite things of Matthew and Sophia were. I'm not sure how that's going to play into anything yet, though, but I guess we'll see. Yeah, nothing in the creepy toilet room. And we still have two more other keys to use. We have the one for the PI briefcase and for Bernard's house. Oh, man, there's just so many leads to follow up on this. Again, one of the greatest strengths in this game is the way that, like, it's... Dis I'm going to call it the discovery loop. Like, that's the term I would give to this, where each location has a little new morsel of information that brings you around the map and gets you more familiar with it and engages, like, the 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 creative, the investigative part of your brain where it's like, okay, this is leading me here. Why did this person have this thing? What is this new location going to give me that I didn't have before? Yeah, we can't open these back doors, right? Okay. All right, let's go inside. And go to his, I think what, what his room was 201, right? I believe so. Go to room 201, check out the briefcase, see what they get, that gets us. Because, again, we found this key. Yeah, yeah, the car outside. That was the PI's car that we went into and found all of the, 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 the stuff about, like, Sophia being the key to all this. And then, on top of that, the bloody handprint on the glove box. That's probably the most we found from a, a, a car. Let's see. So let's try this. Aha. So what's in the briefcase? What did he find? What do we have here? Hmm. Oh, didn't... Wasn't there a note about this? About the score or something? Maybe I'm misremembering. I thought there was something about this that we read somewhere. Uh, let's see. Photos... I would have swore we found something like that. No. And we need to go back to, oh my god, and we need to go back to the hunting cabin too. Oh my god. Oh yeah, here it is. Study room lock desk hint. Subtract the yellow dart points from the red darts total. And then Aunt Cecilia's apartment code and AOL password. So study room lock desk hint. That's where it was. So I'm assuming that it is this photo okay and we'll just need to figure out the score from that all right fair enough we got the, the clues for that the code for charles's safe in the gallery is vincent's birthday how could i not have thought about that call sheriff james check the check his file oh is this the the, the filing cabinet oh oh we definitely want a photo of that 7741 so we can go back to the sheriff's office wait i thought i put in 
Scott's birthday. I thought I even tried that. Maybe we need to, maybe we actually need to find this first. Maybe it wouldn't let us do it. All right, what do we have here? Autopsy report for, oh, Andrew Reed. 44 old white male with burns found at home, pronounced dead at the scene. Third degree burns found across body, completely charred over the head, face, neck, and hands. Heavily charred across the front and back of the body, legs, and feet. Closer inspection reveals punctured lungs with an object similar to a switchblade or small knife. Pneumothorax is a possible cause of death, but body is too burnt to confirm. So wait, Andrew Reed was not, he was stabbed to death. Yeah, he, he definitely burned, but it seems like someone stabbed him, and that's like the real cause of death because he couldn't get up while the house was, you know, burning down. Oh, interesting. Uh, Henry Johnson, okay, 61-year-old white male pulled out of a uh, car submerged in lake. Victim's lungs do not contain water, which shows that he did not die by drowning. Uh huh. Yeah, exactly. Like he was stabbed, and then the fire was used to cover the crime because you know there were bottle of booze, candles everywhere. So someone murdered Andrew Reed for the same reason that I think, you know, uh, Johnson was murdered. Is that they were trying to cover up what happened to Sophia, and then I guess by proxy, then what happened to Vivian? Because it seems like Vivian was killed because of what happened to Sophia. Maybe. maybe. But again, the other thing is, are there multiple suspects because there are multiple motivations for the crimes? Like, is someone taking advantage of the fact that there are strange deaths to commit their own crime of passion? Or, you know, maybe just their own, like, crime, like their cold, cold, cold-blooded crime. Okay, but okay, so what happened to Johnson here, Dr. Johnson? Uh, so he didn't drown. Due to the prolonged submersion of the body in the water, the estimated time of death might not be accurate. The estimated time of death is between 12 to 16 days. Oh, so he died around two weeks before he was put in the uh, the car. And then I guess the car was like pushed into the lake. Interesting. Uh, top right side of the skull leaning towards the front and above the right eye has a wide crack, usually caused by a sharp object and a strong force. Strong object, sharp object, and a strong force. Uh, front torso, face, and back portion of forearm suffered numerous lacerations. Victim most likely succumbed to blood loss before being placed in water. Okay. Interesting. So he definitely died by a sharp and strong force, but it's, it's a pretty big object. So maybe like a fire poker. We did see the the axe cabinet that was broken into, uh, but that was in Bernard's house, right? If I remember correctly. So interesting. So he died through like blunt force trauma and blood loss. Okay, and this is Vivian. How did she die? 55 year old white female found lying in front of mansion gates, pronounced dead at the scene. There's a 12 centimeter wide and seven centimeter deep crack found on the right side of the head. Impact caused by strong force with a sharp object. So the same way that Johnson died. Lacerations on front torso and back sides of both forearms. Victim died from loss of blood. So the two of them died in the same way. Interesting. So then the outlier here is Andrew Reed. Well, this killer's MO is different here. So maybe they're, they are a different killer. Hmm. Or maybe they, they, it's just a, a weapon of opportunity. So yeah, it's a small knife or a switchblade. Interesting, very, very interesting. Okay, so we got the access code to the sheriff's uh, filing cabinet as well. So let's go investigate that. That was one of the first things we found in the game. That was, I guess, the first thing that really taught us that like, there's gonna be codes that you don't have access to right away, no matter how much you search an individual location, and you're gonna have to return. Like that's that 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 is a tough lesson to I guess teach a player when your your whole principle is like oh you better be very methodical. But I I think it's pretty clear that like hey you're gonna have to do some looking around in these multiple locations and it's gonna be a back and forth kind of thing. Still I haven't seen any other sightings of at least not that I've no at least not that I've noticed. It'd be very funny if, if y'all noticed, like, Sophia or someone else. Like, as far as we know, like, Sophia is dead. 
but is there anyone else around here? Wait, oh, oh, oh it's this gate. <laughs> I was like, wait, how did we get in here? Okay. All right, let's go check the filing cabinet here. So I think this was labeled classified files, if I remember correctly. And around the corner. Boom and boom. Yes, classified. And I think it was 7741. Just let me check that. Yeah, 7741. Great. And I got to remember this here. Where is... No, it's not that. I got to remember to check on the dartboard. And I, I would have swore we put the, the birthday. Yeah, here it is. Study room lock desk hint. Gotcha. Okay, perfect. So let's go 7741. Perfect. Let's see what this it, what, what's inside classified files. Like we already got the autopsy reports. What could be in here? Um, come on, please let me. Yes, there we go. All right. So to Sheriff Howard. Okay. So this is about the death of Vivian. The crack in Vivian Roberts' skull shows that the weapon used is an object with a heavy and sharp end. So something like an axe would fit the description, which we noted that the axe cabinet in Bernard's place has been broken into. So I guess. At least in my mind, that means that Bernard is probably not the killer of Vivian and Dr. Johnson, because why would he break into his own cabinet when he would theoretically know how to open it or have a key? To cause a crack that big, the attacker must be rather strong. I'm assuming it's either a man or a strong woman who's experienced in the use of the weapon. Uh, have we ran into it? I'm trying to think if there's been any people that we've noted that are especially strong. I guess, you know, just swinging an axe, you know, theoretically, Charles could have done that. Derek could have done that. Bernard seems less likely now, considering it was broken into his place. Uh, who else? I'm trying to remember, uh, there's Father Matthew, and yeah, I didn't make it into town yet. Mm, I guess, theoretically, Scott. Scott is still on the table. Like, Someone could have killed Scott after they found out that he did commit the murders, theoretically, though it doesn't seem likely. It's okay. So the, and obviously a strong woman. I'm trying to think. Of the ladies that have come into town, none of them seem especially strong. Like Dorothy is like a 60-year-old. Maybe one of the maids. Because I guess, yeah, they would be doing physical labor all day, theoretically. So maybe they would be strong enough to wield the axe. Okay, okay. Uh, the victim must have been facing the attacker because of the lacerations found on the front of her torso, as well as the backside of both forearms. All right, so imagine this. Like, if you're defending yourself, like defending your face or your head, you put up your hands to your face, the back of the forearms would be facing forward to the front of the attacker. Okay. The fatal strike landed on the right side of the victim's head, just above her right eyebrows. This clarifies the following. That the, victims, uh, that the victim was facing the killer that the killer is strong enough to land such a clean but deadly blow, and that the killer is left-handed. Oh, I guess, yeah. That makes sense, because if they're swinging the axe and it hits the person's right eye, like, uh, like a very accurate fi fatal strike, they'd have to be probably swinging it with the, the left-hand dominant. Interesting. Since, Or they could be ambidextrous. Since the murder weapon uh, was never recovered and confirmed, my assumption is of it being an axe still remains. Again, there's a missing accent from the cabinet. Since this is me doing you a solid, do not under any circumstance leak this information or I'll be in big trouble. The guys here in Grand City don't want any more than uh, don't want anyone more than necessary to know about these details. Hope the above information helps. Sean uh, Sean M. Smith. Okay. Very interesting. That definitely adds a lot more detail to who our theoretical killer could be. So they have to be left-handed. All right, so this is Vivian Roberts' murder case. Uh, the record of alibi. Okay, okay. So who could it even theoretically be? Uh, Charles Roberts, the husband. I wasn't here when my wife was killed. I left for New York on July 18th to attend a conference meeting that was supposed to last for three days. I was supposed to be back on the weekend. On the morning of July 20th, however, I received a phone call from our butler, Bernard, informing me that Vivian had been murdered. I could not believe what I heard. I cut short my trip and immediately came back to Paints Creek. Okay, but I guess the thing is, like, can anyone corroborate where you were? Like... It's, it says you were supposed to be back. You were supposed to be at a conference. Okay. Uh, Matthew Brooks, 
Uh, there's an annual religious gathering event in Hartford where pastors from different churches in our state's vicinity meet and discuss what we can do to help our society. The event started on July 18th and ran for five days, so it ended on July 23rd. I represent Paints Creek Trinity Church at the event. Our church can confirm this because we had to cancel our Sunday service that week. Okay, but again, that doesn't confirm that you were there, though. Only that that's when the event ran. And similarly, I guess the, the main thing is, though, between these two, he says he was in New York. So even if, hmm, even if no one can corroborate it, it's at least really, or if someone does corroborate that he was there. So if someone says, yeah, I saw him in New York, it would be very hard for him to sneak away and kill Vivian. While theoretically it would be possible for Matthew to do it, but that's a bit of a stretch. All right, so here's Bernard, the butler. I was preparing for the fundraising event when I felt sick. However, there was no one who can really do my job, so I kept working. At about 9 in the evening, I was too sick to continue, so I bid Vivian goodnight and headed back home. Dorothy Patterson saw me leave. No, there's no one else that lives there. I live alone. So he has no witness at home. So he could have left the property and come back. But again, I think it's very unlikely that it was Bernard, considering that his own axe cabinet was broken into. Unless he's like super like, you know, galaxy brain move, breaking his own cabinet to make it seem like someone stole the axe when he was always intending to use it. Okay, so here's Dorothy. Yes, Bernard was not feeling well that day, so he left slightly earlier than usual. However, he finished his work before he left. When I saw how sick he appeared, I wondered how he could have kept on working. Well, I guess that's why the Roberts family trusts him so much. Oh, me? I was around the mansion most of the time, either preparing the food or making sure that the other maids were doing their jobs. The fundraising event, which was to be held the following day, was important to Vivian, so we were all making sure that everything would be perfect. By the time Mary left, it was already past midnight. I locked the door and then went home myself. No, I live alone. So Mary, theoretically, could be a suspect. You know, young... Theoretically strong if they're doing physical labor. Yeah, exactly. Wouldn't that be a, a, a good uh, cover? You break into your own cabinet and then claim the axe was stolen and you were sick. You were asleep. You know, it just disappeared while you were there. And then obviously you go use it. That's a very insidious cover. Uh, I, I agree, uh, Grown Cobra. All right. So here's Mary Martin uh, Martinez. Theoretically could have done it. Uh, my name is Mary Martinez. I've been working in the kitchen for the past few days for the upcoming fun. I, but again, what's her motive? Jimmy's Bakery was supposed to deliver the cakes, but a few days before the event, they called to inform us that they can't make it. Suddenly, I was in charge of the cakes. I was so mad because we didn't have much time, and this event was supposed to be extremely crucial for Vivian's business. But after hearing that Vivian was murdered, all my anger and work just mm, sort of became irrelevant. All right. Again, not a lot of motives for Mary, considering she's only been working there for a short time, getting up to speed. And here's Derek Tyler, the chauffeur, the driver. I remember dropping Mr. Roberts off at the airport on July, uh, July 18th at around 2 p.m. Okay, so he can alibi that it at least took him to the airport. I was supposed to come back after that uh, to drive around for Vivian, but she told me to take a break since I haven't had a day off for quite some time. I decided to visit a friend of mine who was moving upstate to West Dakota. What sort of friend? Oh, oh, what sort of friend? An elementary school buddy that used to live here, but moved uh, but moved when he received his scholarship. I stayed at his place for a few days before coming back to Paints Creek. Yes, he can vouch for me. I have his number at home. I can give it to you later. Derek never gave me the number. Oh, interesting. Very, very interesting. So Derek never gave the number for this friend who would who would have who was supposed to alibi him. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, so Derek doesn't have a good alibi, and he only can alibi Mr. Roberts until 2 p.m. the day before the the day like leading up to the murder. So yeah, I wonder if we can get into Derek Tyler's house. So uh, what was his mom's name again? Was it um Wanda, right? So I'm trying to remember if we ever got access to their place. Let's see. Go to Paints Creek map. Oh, no, no. I want to go to the photo that Scott made of his map. Where is it? It should be down here, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Derek and Wanda's house is 43 
Silver Lake Boulevard. There we go. There we go. Yeah, you can see it right there. It's it's the topmost right uh, one. It's, so it's nearby the church then. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. And do we have anything else in here? Nothing there. Anything on the bottom? Aha! What do we have here? Hmm. What is this? Glasses? Whistle? And a key, it looks like. A car key? Interesting. Whose car key, though? Hmm. That is very strange. Why does he have a car key there? Like, what does it say in our inventory? Okay, a car key belongs to a Maverick model. A Maverick model. Hmm. A car key. I'm trying to think where... Why would we need to start one of the cars? Unless that'll let us open one of the trunks? Like, maybe turning on the car will unlock the rest of the doors? Okay, well, I guess we'll we'll hold on to that for now. And go back and check the cars. Like, can we go, can we go into our car? Use car. Oh, okay, this, no, 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 um, do you want to leave? No, I do not want to leave. We still have much investigation to do. Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, it seems like Derek and Wanda's place. I'm trying to remember, hmm, where, where were they? So, we went into Derek's, like, loft in the garage, like, where he works on the cars and kind of where it seems like he spends most of his time. And I don't remember seeing a key there. And uh, I guess the other spot is... They spent time at the hospital. I guess we weren't super thorough at the hospital, so we should, maybe we should go back there at some point. Can I use the key on this car? So maybe it's the one over by the church? Hmm. Okay, so we got the combination to get into, theoretically, the locked study room, as well as, or the, the desk in the study room, and the safe in the gallery from the briefcase there. Uh, so let's go to Bernard's house, and then I guess let's go to the mansion. Boy, oh boy, there's so much to do. And I love taking back streets. Oh, and this car too. I don't think we ever opened this one. Uh, unlock, so let's go here uh, and go to our Slim Jim. I don't remember seeing anything in here. Can we open the glove box? Come on. No, it's locked. And it doesn't, oh, it does have an unlock on it though. So wait, who lives here? I don't remember. Any information about this car or house? Okay, uh, so let's go here again. No, nothing here. Nothing for that key. Nothing for the trunk. Okay, fair enough. Let's go back to the mansion.